You've seen the title, you've seen the thumbnail, it's time. Welcome back to the base Digimon channel. And if you're wondering why you clicked on this video, it's because you've got great taste and you know how to spend your time wisely. I like that. But it's gonna take more than that to impress me. <laughs> Here we go again. Yes, this is another theory video on the googly eyed boy, aka Mr. True Big Bad, aka My Best Mate, aka Episode 1 Stan. Why? It's because. There's probably more reason to do this video now than there was ever before, because as of episode 51, this secret entity was directly addressed for the first time ever. Three theory videos and a couple of mentions along the way. I, we, are not crazy. Yeah. Now, despite the fact that we on this channel are firmly in the loop on this, practically born in the loop on this, for several months, some newer viewers to this channel might have just been enlightened on the recent episode. So, because we don't discriminate here, we include. We're going to have a fleshed out, clear understanding of how this unfolded, in sequence of everything I came across on this mystery. Ladies, gents, and everything fabulous in between, old and new viewers, I do very much hope you enjoyed this video. See, I'm wearing the glasses this video because I can do this fantastic glasses prop up to amplify a point because this is one of those intelli intelligence videos. Okay, everyone. Are you ready? Are you really ready? Part one, Cormon in the network. The gist of this video that I did a while ago was that we were wondering why Cormon was in the network in the first place. This might seem like a very mundane topic, but it really wasn't. We questioned the black orb at the very start in episode one, appearing and vanishing, creating Argomon, we speculated, very much in line with this week's episode that's just gone by, some force suspect to be the digital world itself, brought about the fate of the destined, as per the crests, at the earliest point in time, and with Koromon meeting Taiji in the network, almost conveniently as the Chosen were summoned. We also speculated as to why Koromon's instinct was to move towards or attack this black orb sphere in the network, for reasons that are actually still unknown to this day. But I think retrospectively, as of the last two weeks, episode 15 and 51, I think it's been stated twice that the digital world has intentions. So I think the digital world being alive and sentient is that missing piece of the puzzle for that video. But moving on. Part 2, the secret villain. We had seen this mysterious Digimon, supposedly, about episode 18, in contact with Devimon, in command of Soundbirdmon, and possibly coercing Orgamon, further resuming the countdown to zero in Tokyo. Then at the same time, in the Digivices released as merchandise, it was confirmed that Millennium was not the final boss. There was a secret final boss, which is unnamed, and is still unnamed, and looks nothing like Ghoulmon, Deathmon, or Millenniumon. Further to this, this mysterious final boss has three stages to the battle, and comes in varying forms. This possibly emphasises its significance as a really troublesome foe to overcome very much in the future. And then once again, retrospectively, as of episode 50, we'd seen something very mysterious in this sky when Millenniumon got knocked down by the two holy dragons and then evolved into Z Millenniumon. These mysterious eyes and ambiguous entities always appear when these big bads evolve again. But moving on now, part three, the true villain. A few months later, additional Digivice information confirmed that the final battle with this entity will be in the network. Why? Because the images in the Digivices and the merchandise, not only have they been pretty much extremely accurate as to what will appear in the reboot, it also contains the locations of said battles. Millennium on Ifaga, Paratmon in the Forest, and this image of the final location is virtually identical to episode 1 in the network where the Black Sphere appeared. This black orb resurfaces both in the Digivice and in the reboot at the very end, which confirms that episode 1 really was as important as I stressed it was. And because of the Digivice's accuracy of the areas to the battles in the reboot, we can assume that this is correct, because why would it be wrong about just one area? Especially when it looks pretty much exactly the same as episode 1. So I believe this is confirmation, and therefore the final battle against this new secret entity will be in the network, and it will be a new villain in the franchise as it has no name, it is still unnamed, and nobody can really identify what it is. Granted, this Digimon looks like something similar to Ghoulmon Deathmon from the previous flashback in the lore, very early on in the series, but this representation in the Digivices looks nothing like that, and if it was called Deathmon or Ghoulmon, it would have been named as such much like Millenniumon was. We also speculated that the events of Argomon, Nidhogmon, and the satellite falling from the sky were not caused by Millenniumon all before episode 51 even happened. And this was confirmed in the dialogue with Wisemon. So we are very much hot on the trail of the mystery now. Now finally moving on to part four, 
the motivation. Now that Wise One has specified this entity as an unlocatable, more sinister version of Millennium, it was then also stated that the crests, as said in my review from last week, were linked to the Chosen Ones many, many years ago, as these crests existed at the beginning of the digital world itself, which was specifically stated to have a role in the Great Cataclysm, and the Great Cataclysm is to be caused by this mysterious entity. Therefore, it's right to reason that this mysterious entity has some connection to the beginning of the digital world, and has begun making its move at the same time as the Chosen Ones. Now all of this is coming to a head. Izzy pointed out that it was a real coincidence that when they came around to get information of the crests, and speaking of Wisemon, Burtmon was sent and attacked and tried to eat the data, which is essentially a clear strategical attack to remove all of their information. And this was shown that this entity has a close eye on the Chosen Ones, and possibly has been watching them this entire time. But with this not so formal introduction to this mysterious villain, we should try to understand why it does what it does. If it had existed at the start of the digital world, assuming it's the same rage as the human world, then it wouldn't really make sense to be attacking the human world all the time, like the repeated events in Tokyo. Because if the crest existed so long ago to save the world from it, then why would its priority be humans when humans didn't really exist at that time? Or alternatively, consider this. This threat could be man-made. The crest in the digital world might not actually be that old, but still old, as wise when it stated previous generations and generations have passed already, the crests might not be specifically for this cataclysm caused by this entity, they are just there to stop cataclysms in general. For example, maybe this is the exact reason why the crests kind of intervened in evolving the Holy Digimon into the Holy Dragons, Godramon, and Holy Dramon. As when you see in the mega sequence, the evolution rings had all of the crests on them, right? But I think both reasons are really plausible. It could be interpreted either way. But going back on this secret entity's motives, you would think that it hates humans considering all these attacks and all these plots made by this entity, Argamon, the Hogmon, the satellite, all revolved around destroying Tokyo. Why is that? It's tried three times, not including Millenniumon, or what Millenniumon could have done. Does this entity hate humans? Why does it hate humans? How old is this entity? If it doesn't hate humans, is there a goal to destroying Tokyo repeatedly? These are answers we have yet to find, but on this channel, we are hot on the trail. But that concludes our findings for today, but with the next coming weeks regarding the crests and the mega evolutions, I wonder if this will slowly develop into understanding more about this mysterious entity, more than just the crests, much like how in episode 51, it wasn't just about the crests, it was about the overall plot. So we can hope that we'll get answers very, very soon. And I, for one, am so, so excited about this mystery. It's really made everything we've had so far in the reboot worthwhile for me, and that nothing was really left out of place at all, because we'll just never know until the reboot actually finishes. But everyone, if you made it this far, thank you so much for watching today's video. This is essentially the fourth installment of the theory videos on this particular topic, and maybe there'll be more, who knows. But until a lot more is revealed, this video definitely does the job in accumulating all the information that we have on this topic together. Thank you for watching this far into the video. I really appreciate your time. Please like, comment, and subscribe. Still more videos to come this week and next week, so don't miss those. Please hit the notification bell so you don't miss any of this content. I hope you had a great time. Thanks for tuning in, but most importantly, take care.